The red shirt leaders surrendered to government forces after their camp was stormed. But this was followed by riots and arson attacks, a shopping centre, banks and a TV station went up in flames. Outside Bangkok, a state of emergency has been declared across 23 provinces and a nighttime curfew is now in place. But that's been defied in several towns, including Nong Hai and Udon Thani in the northeast and further west in Chiang Mai, a place normally teeming with tourists. Angry protesters took to the streets there. From Bangkok, Alistair Leithhead now reports. It was a peculiar type of defiance. At 6 a.m., the protesters who held Bangkok hostage knew the army was coming, but had already made their decision to stay. A few hundred meters away, after two months of waiting and threatening, the military finally moved in. The hardcore of the anti-government protesters knew what to do, but the troops did not take any chances. They advanced with a policy of shoot to kill. Kill and injure many people, they did. It didn't take long to break through the barricades. But they weren't the only ones doing the shooting. These were the militia who turned peaceful protest into urban warfare on the streets of Bangkok. The military are moving forward once again. They're going step by step, firing live rounds when they do. You can see how the protesters are getting out of the area now as fast as they can. As a deadly confrontation seemed unavoidable, an announcement was made on the stage. It's all over. Go home, he said. The leaders had agreed to turn themselves in to stop more bloodshed. In defeat, their supporters were angry and frustrated but they did as they were asked. Within half an hour, the city centre was deserted. They were gone. Or most of them were. What began as a peaceful protest two months ago has ended like this, with the army being sent in, people being killed and injured, and the protest being broken up. Many of those people setting fire to buildings as they went, the leaders taken into police custody. But the anger and resentment that created this situation in the first place has not gone away. It'll be a long time before the deep divisions in Thailand society are healed. But even that calm didn't last long. Mob rule filled the vacuum and Thailand's biggest shopping mall was set alight. Militia clashed again with troops. The violence has far from burned itself out. Alistair Leithhead, BBC News, Bangkok. I'm joined now from another of our correspondents in Bangkok, Lucy Williamson. Lucy, what's the situation there at the moment? Well, Bangkok is tonight under curfew, as are 23 provinces across Thailand, about a third of the country. I'm talking to you from inside the hotel now, precisely because we can't go outside anymore until tomorrow morning. And when I look outside at the main road down here in the, in the bar district, the restaurant district just here, it's in almost total darkness. Just a few security forces patrolling up and down those roads, checking for anyone who might be still out and about. We were seeing pictures earlier of the Bangkok skyline just shrouded in smoke. I mean, those were very big fires, weren't they? Enormous fires. One of them was at um, a, a very big shopping mall, a shopping centre, uh, full of restaurants and bars and high-end shops quite close to the protesters' site. That burnt for hour upon hour upon hour. And you had this huge column of black smoke just coming into the uh, Bangkok sky and drifting over the skyline for, for hours, as I say. That has now been almost completely burnt to the ground. And it was targeted, we think, because it was simply close to where the protesters' main site was. Other targets, the stock exchange, banks, for example, seem to have been targeted perhaps because they were financial targets in their own right. There was some sort of method in some of these targets. What reports are you getting from the rest of Thailand? Very little at the moment. The curfew has made reporting quite difficult for obvious reasons, and the government has taken over some of the TV channels here um, for the duration of the overnight curfew, though, of course, the websites, the um, other media are still up and running. The um, reports that we got uh, shortly before the curfew were that the government's military action in Bangkok had indeed prompted 
quite a bit of anger in the north and the northeast of the country, which has been sending uh, groups of protesters down to join their colleagues here in, in Bangkok during the protest. We had reports of government buildings being burnt, of vehicles being burnt. But since the curfew was in place, we've, we've had uh, much fewer reports. You have very little information really coming out of those regions. Lucy Williamson, thank you very much. Well, I can now uh, join uh, Ambassador Don Pramutwi Nai, who is uh, Ambassador to the United States, Thai Ambassador, I should say. He's in our Washington studio uh, now. Uh, Ambassador, uh, Thailand seems today to be a very divided country politically. This action by the military today in Bangkok is not going to help heal those divisions, is it? Uh, when you said divided, uh allow me to refer to Thailand, which is stable, very solid uh, for, for, num for a long, long years. It has just been divided by the instigations uh, of uh, uh, these protesters, the, particularly the leaders of protesters uh, during this uh, uh, past year, and particularly during the uh, uh, last few months. So that's why we stay divided. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, we are the nation of resiliency uh, we can certainly come back, but then it certainly requires uh, some healing efforts. Uh, we know that this is not uh, the, mom the moment that we, we can cherish. Uh, we are all sad, but uh, um, with, with all our hearts put together, we should be able to uh, bring back but all the divisions. I, I mean, I know that a lot of Thais are divided about how to deal um, with these uh, protesters. I know a, a lot of people feel the red shirts should be punished for bringing so much chaos. On the other hand, the supporters of the red shirts are understandably very, very upset uh, uh, about the tough action that's been taken against them. Uh, how do you reconcile those two sides? Well, when you say the tough action, uh, uh, people uh, I, would, I would have to point out that uh, uh, the government uh, has been trying to uh, exercise measures which has been most reasonable, very much according to the standard. Well, the military standard. used live ammunition. I think that constitutes tough action. Yes, uh, live ammunition were used in specific circumstances. It's not really an all-out shooting, but uh, it was painted as, as such. You know, by by some medias, and and then it was not only shooting from the military, but there were snipers, there were hidden forces uh, back on the uh, on the top of the buildings or here and there, and there were a number of people, including international journalists uh, in, in Thailand, were hit. Uh, now the question is, would the Thai uh, military uh, Thai troops hit those international journalists? Uh, my answer is no, and I I would I would I would dare to ask everybody that. Uh, this is perpetrated by the third forces, and uh, we all know that. What, what, what's going to happen next? Uh, because clearly the red shirt protesters uh, had grievances, um, and those are not going to go away, are they? What do you think the government is going to do to address uh, some of their concerns? Well, the concern has been addressed uh, initially on the 3rd of May uh, by this five-point uh, reconciliation roadmap it was about to converge. The, the interest and the di divergence of uh, positions were almost converged uh, in the following days, but then it was uh, broken down. Now, uh, despite that, uh, the government is now trying and, in fact, has been implementing uh, several of these uh, five point plans. Uh, so, uh, just uh, everybody briefly, can, can, uh, just bring, br just briefly, can what, be brought what, on board. What, what, are they? What, what are they, very briefly? Uh, the five point, uh, firstly, is on the uh, monarchy institutions. Uh, secondly, on the uh, injustice uh, in, uh, in the society uh, and several of the social issues. Uh, thirdly, uh, on the media uh, reform. And fourthly, the independent commission uh, would have to uh, do a, a very a comprehensive uh, and in-depth fact-finding and, and fifthly, uh, that was the political uh, reform. Well, uh, those five But what about elections, have been though, support. isn't it? Because, I mean, elections well, are the key thing that the protesters wanted. Uh, is that going to yes. happen? Oh, uh, election is, is, in fact, the integral point of that five-point plan, which was put up on the 3rd of May. It was even specified to be on the 14th of November. 
and 14 November will come a year and four months earlier than the term of this present government. But it was shot down by the protesters you know, for apparent reason. Uh, apparent reason is that this five-point plan doesn't take into account uh, certain interests of certain individuals, uh, particularly the leader of the, uh, of the UDD. Although, although the call uh, from, from uh, the people at large... You're or referring those people to the former Prime Minister, Taksin Sinan. Well, certainly, certainly. Yeah. You, you blame uh, and him. several included. Do you think he was behind all this trouble? If you ask 100 Thai persons uh, right now, you know, whether he is behind all this, uh, 200 people will say yes. <laughs> Ambassador, thank you very much. Thank you. Russian and Polish officials invest...